Adam Zansi. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of uh, Game On, brought to you by Hollywood Best. On this week's show, we do have for you, of course, Nam Tampelo, the Safa Media Liaison Officer. That's later on in the show. She'll be breaking down the uh, well, Hollywood Best uh, Super League, of course, and what's happening out in the ladies' game, including the developments Hollywood Best is making and, of course, uh, contributing to the South African game. We'll also have Jerry Skosana talking about all things local in our football, as well as Shane McGregor, and he talks about the race right at the top of the uh, English Premiership. So stay with us. So there's plenty to talk about, and uh, let's waste no time in getting into what's happening out in England. Well, Shane, good day it is to you, my good sir. We spoke last week about Manchester City, Arsenal. City under pressure, of course, in playing catch-up. Uh, away at Fulham, and Fulham have come up with a surprise result or two in uh, recent times, but uh, City cruised through them, 4 0 the scoreline. Yeah, easy game for them, you know, at the end of the day, but uh, no games are easy, but yeah. it turned out to be that way. Yeah, Fulham have been so hot and cold, blowing all over the place, you know, win one, go lose a few more. But City got the job done, very professional, and uh, yeah, got 4 0. That's a big victory for them. Remember, for goal difference as well, that's a yep. big thing. We wondered whether they'd be able to do the business again against Tottenham Hospital in what was two tough matches out uh, in London. Again, they keep a clean sheet and walk away 2 0 winners against Tottenham. That was the big thing, keeping the clean sheet. You know, a very scrappy game, yeah. uh, if, you, if you watch the game. They, they, they got the job done. That's all they had to do was get the results. And all those Erland Haaland haters, I mean, once again, you know, he did nothing in the game basically but scored two goals. Two what important more goals. Do you want? Well, what more do you want? Two, two very important goals that could win them the championship. Exactly. The I, I, I don't mind having to play a team for me, playing for me, that does nothing but scores goals. Sure. What a pleasure. Yeah, now Arsenal, they had a tough fixture. And I only say tough because of the rivalry between these two sides, not necessarily because of the form United have been in you know, over the last few years. But Arsenal, again, walk away one no win. It's not quite so easy, but they get the job done. But if you look at if you look at history and, and head-to-heads, yeah. Arsenal have struggled that when yes. they've gone to Old Trafford. And to get a result like it, I think it's the first time in many a year that they've won there. It just shows you the, how they've changed, mm. where they come from. Mm. I mean, Gone, years gone by, they would have just uh, petered out and uh, ended up being a draw, but they got the result, 1-0. Good luck to them, man. You know, it's, they're taking the, the, the fight to the wire, which is a good thing for us. Now, uh, we have to talk about this quickly. Aston Villa trying to get into a top four position. We know Tottenham lost. Uh, Aston Villa going to join an entertaining game against Liverpool. Six goals they served up, 3-3 the scoreline. Very good game. Um, yeah. Again, once again, I watched that game. Uh, Liverpool gave it away at the end, but a good result for Villa, which now puts them in their fourth spot. Uh, they're safe in it, definitely in it. Um, but for Liverpool, you know, it's, it's just been their season, exactly that. You know, mm. Missed chances, um, not defending well. Uh, you know, good luck. Uh, but at uh, the end of the day, it's an <laughs> entertaining game. I loved it every minute. Yeah. Of it. I mean, two good teams and Villa got the job done. Well done to them. Now, we know the three teams that came in at the start of the season, they all would have had one mission, try and stay yeah. in uh, the top flight of English football. All three of them have found the going tough. Luton, Burnley, Sheffield, all of them are on their way back down to the uh, lower division. Your thoughts on their, on their seasons? Yeah, unfortunately for them, it, that happened. Sheffield, uh, you know, it just weren't good enough. Yeah. Example of that. Burnley, uh, for me, they made the mistake of bringing in too many youngsters that have got futures mm -hmm. coming forward. Um, you needed something to, to be kept in there. And it showed right at the end of the season, they hit the form um, with those youngsters coming to the fore a little bit too late. Talking about bouncing straight back, uh, Leicester City is uh, back from uh, uh, a season in the lower division, quite impressively, of course, coming uh, first in the season, beating Ipswich Town by just one point. So these are sides that have been there in the past yeah. that come back, of course, to rub the shoulders with the very best in England. I'm so glad that Leicester's back, you know. They, yeah. uh, they were add value. They are a huge club, they yeah. add value. Yeah. I think they're going to learn their lesson from, from what happened um, and, and they'll stay up, but they're not going to be one of those sides that come up and then go straight down. I think mm. they'll be there and they'll, they'll, they'll uh, give a lot of the teams, the big teams, a fright this, this coming season. And also Ipswich, you know, brilliant to see them back. We used to have a couple of players that played for Ipswich, South African players. Yeah, so yeah. It's nice to see them back. Uh, you know, it's good to see them back in the, in the Premier League. You and I said it's going down to the wire as early as January. Here we are in May and we're moving towards the end of the season. Our game to go, Arsenal up against Everton. 
Arsenal at home. Uh, City will be at home to West Ham United. I think it's quite telling that both these sides are playing at home, but both of them with some difficult fixtures coming up here. It is a difficult fixture. You know, for Everton, they can just go out and enjoy it. Mm. If I was a manager, Everton coach, I'd say, just boys, go out and enjoy it. You're safe. You can't get relegated. Go give them a fright and go, just give it a chore. You know, have fun. Last game of the season. On the other hand, with you got Man City playing against West Ham. Yeah, and West Ham have a little bit of incentive to do Arsenal a favour. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, if Arsenal win the league, uh, Declan Rice, they've got to pay five million extra for him. Yeah, um, Arsenal, yeah, to Arsenal, West Ham. To West Ham. Yeah. So for West Ham, that's got it. Moyes, his last game in charge of West Ham. So everything to play for. You know, City are under pressure. Uh, it's a good time to, to go out there and just have a go and, and have a full go at them, put them under pressure early on, and you, you never know what will happen. You might get a result. So we're going to have a dramatic ending to the season by the look of it. It's going to be. And you know the best part is they both kick off at the same time. Well, all the teams, all the kick, teams off the kick off at the same, same time, time. Yeah, five which is brilliant. So you don't, you're not worried about what's happened. Uh, we need to do this, we need to do that. you just got to go out and do your job. So uh, up to this point, when you look at City, uh, you look at Arsenal, here they are going into the last games of the season. Did you expect it to be these two teams in particular remaining or maybe one change in Liverpool being there as well? I expected all three to be there, to be yeah, very yeah. honest with you. But, you know, Liverpool went through their bad patch at the wrong time for yeah, them yeah. and that's happened. But we've been saying now for months that it's going to go to the wire. Mm. And, you know, we've been vindicated. You know, you look at it and you see exactly where they are. Two teams deserve it. Yeah. I think, personally, I would prefer Arsenal to win it because mm -hmm. I think of what they've done and how they bounce back. But at the end of the day, it's what you do on the day. Um, and that's what it's come down to, what we do on the day, last day of the season. And what a day it promises to be, the last day of the season. Arsenal, can they do it against Everton? Everton have been known to come up in games of this nature and make a game of it. That said, West Ham can do likewise with Mears, uh, bidding farewell to West Ham after what has been a lovely stint for him in his return to the top flight of English football. Or will Manchester City be the side to once again rule supreme over England? We'll find out together with the rest of the world in the days to come and of course have Shane back to discuss it uh, in what will be a dramatic ending to yet another fun season. So, Jerry Kosana up next, let's discuss things locally. Game on. Check these guys. <laughs> Let's see how you play. Welcome back, and what a weekend of football we had in the DSTV Premiership last weekend. The big talk was a size fighting for the number two position, battling against size fighting to get out of the relegation and the playoff situation. I'm joined now by Jerry Skosana. And Jerry, uh, let's firstly start right at the bottom. Cape Town Spurs went into the last two games uh, needing six points out of those two games. They got four, and uh, well, the dice cost by relegating you, but we'll pass the first division. How have you seen the season? All in all. Yes, I, I, I think it wasn't something good for Cape Town Spurs. I'm mm. just worried with the number of teams in the Western Cape. You know, we always want to have an expansion of teams being in all the provinces. And mm -hmm. when you talk about coastal in terms of uh, Devon, Cape Town, Eastern Cape, East London, we want to see teams being there, especially Cape Town, because it's got a lot of history. Mm. You remember they used to have a uh, Santos who once won the league. Spurs themselves have won the league. Spurs themselves and uh, uh, I think it was seven stars where yeah. McCarthy yeah. grew yeah. up as a small boy. So I think for me to have a team coming there and then going back to the Mutsipe Championship, it was just saddening on my side. Sad indeed, of course, for the city of Cape Town and supporters of Cape Town Spurs, but the other sides that are still not safe, so to speak. One of them was Morocco Swallows, um, went up against Stellenbosch, and everyone I spoke to, their money was on Stellenbosch for this one. Uh, Swallows, um, having never beaten Stellenbosch before this season, have beaten them earlier in the season 2-0. They beat them again late in the season when they desperately needed it. Again, Baba Shai Tunil. I, I, I lost my bet with Hollywood bets and that one. Because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if yeah. you look at Isuelo, is, is, is the way they were playing, yes, they are not that difficult team to look at and say they won't get anything. But 
if you compare them the the stylists, the way stylists were were in form. Mm. But for me, uh, uh, stylists for them to lose go sundowns, basically and I think it was a little bit of a worrying factor to them, maybe to the players and the coaches. But uh, I think Swallows did well. They played beautiful football. They worked hard for each they other. They worked hard Defensive. for each other. Yeah. Especially I would give uh, Kabatino Mohango, mm. you know, the applaud because he was a true striker. That's what I've seen. What he was doing at Swallows, the uh, things that he did uh, for Orlando Pirates in terms of scoring goals and being there up front and making sure that everything goes well. So, yeah, it was a big win for Swallows, but really a surprising result for everybody. Yeah, the surprises didn't end there. Later on in the day, Richard just Bay were playing Orlando Pirates. Now it's just been now Shai Pirates high flying Orlando Pirates, high scoring Orlando Pirates. Baba Shai 1 0. Pirates couldn't find the back of the net. Yo, and the playing, imagine playing at home. Mm. You know, Gweska, Gweska, Maminze, La Iskoti, which is Orlando Stadium. Yep. And then from uh, uh, qualifying for the net bank and then going to lose against the team that is fighting relegation, you know, it was not a good uh, performance. But yeah, look at the celebration that the uh, Richards Bay team had mm. in the field of play. It's more like they were safe from relegation, but yeah, for them to make sure that Cape Town Spurs are out of the league, that was the celebration itself because they want to say if we avoid relegation, at least we're going to be in the playoffs. Yeah, well. You know, and look at two of the teams that are coming in the championship to play with. You know, they might still have a chance of staying in the TSTV Premiership. But yeah, I think for them to beat Pirates, it was also a good uh, game. But yeah, give credit to Pants as well. But for me, the goal that they scored, if maybe it was an out ball, it was still going to be a penalty. Sure. Because I saw Jesse number 15. Yeah. I was worried to say, hey, what is Jerry doing there? <laughs> oh, don't draw. <laughs> yeah, they so did that, that, that touch, you know. Yeah. And then it deflected, but obviously they gave advantage when uh, Barnes scored that goal. Talking about the fight to get into second spot now, E Pirates up against Galaxy. Last game, it's Dylan Bosch. Dylan the Sundowns last game. Yay. Next game, rather. That, that's still going to be good, mm. just born at that, that position. Yeah. Because if Pirates would want to fight and make sure which Batola these points to leapfrog Stelis. Yeah. And you know Stelis. Mm -hmm. Let's hope maybe they might also try and up their game to beat Sundowns. But if nothing happens, I see Pirates getting into the second spot and qualifying for the championship. Keep in mind, for the most part, two games remaining uh, in the uh, season coming forward now. And there's some teams that will have three games remaining, including the likes of Sundowns, I should say. Now, let's look at those down at the bottom. The Swallows, they've got Super Sports United up next. They've got Royal AM up next. Uh, Royal AM now, but they're in the same position where they're trying to stay out of the relegation playoffs, the uh, promotional playoffs. Yes, normally, Masculi Mangepola, you always want to talk about who's going to win the league. Mm. You know, but now we're talking about who's going to be playing position two yeah. and who's going to avoid relegation for yeah. the playoff. Yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly the point where at the bottom you still have Swallows to face Real AM. What a game it would be. Mm -hmm. because, because Super Sport was struggling. Super Sport are also struggling, you know. So I think it's going to be something good to watch. And let's see if our football will really, really show us what you know. We do have quality. Because it, these are the teams when I see you like, the whole season, sometimes you give yourself to say, okay, I want to play for certain points. Yeah. But if you don't get to those points, and now there is like, you know, the, the, the aches waiting for you. Yeah. you always want to move away from that. Yeah. So that's where you're going to see Swallows and Real M having the good game. Real in the Sundowns, in the cheaper, put in the Swallows. It's not easy. Not easy. It's not, not easy. easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, I mean, they, 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 they just lost to Sundowns, really, yeah? yeah. Yes, they lost twice. Punzi Maguma Mkizi. Punzi Maguma. keeping in mind that it'll just play, will still be up against Cape Town City and Stellenbosch as well. So the race right at the bottom, Jerry Kosana, remains one that's very interesting. We're not quite sure who's going to be in the uh, relegation promotional playoffs at this point, yeah? I don't know what's going to happen because sometimes a big team, if for me, I go on, Result mm. So let's see what's going to happen. But I mean, it's a good thing to talk about and see what's 
up for the teams that want to stay in the DSTV Premiership. Exciting times, of course, in the battle for KEF places and the battle to avoid the promotion relegation playoffs at the end of the season. Welcome back now. As we promised, we will focus in the third segment on the Hollywood Best Super League. And of course, joining us is the Asafa Media Liaison of Samis Namtla Mpelo. Thanks so much for making the time to join us once again, Namtla. Um, as we spoke uh, earlier on in the season, you uh, hinted that you're expecting it to be a much more competitive season this uh, time around, with Mamelodi Sundowns maybe having some good competition. And in the early stages, it's looking as though your predictions are true. Uh, UJ and UWC are right up there with them and making things interesting here in the early stages. Afternoon, Cizwe. Always a pleasure to, to be with you. Um, yes, definitely. I think UWC definitely have, have always tried to keep up with Mamilodi Sundowns. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's good to see um, the University of Johannesburg now stepping up. You know, they're, they're currently in second position going into week 13. And it's great to see what Coach Dunga is doing now that she also has a B license and she's coached the under-17 the under national team. Um, it's good to see the university is doing so well in this league. They certainly are. Now, uh, we also touched on the uh, sides that had come in from uh, the uh, lower divisions. The Nani ladies, of course, winning their first match. It's been tough going ever since yeah. one draw and a couple of losses or a few losses after that. And Fort Hare, maybe a bit of a surprise package of the season. Uh, they run right about the midway point of the table. Yeah. Is it still too early to say they're doing well or that the Nani are struggling towards the end of the season oh. come uh, the, the time that matters? Well, Unfortunately for Lindelani, you know, they're coming into a very big league with yeah. very young players, yeah. you know, so it's going to take them a few years to adjust. Mm -hmm. uh, their players still need to really grow up. Um, I mean, they have a 13 year old yes, player who played that. against yeah. Mami Lodi Sundown. Scored an own goal really, as well. Unfortunately <laughs> for her, but you know, yeah. that is what makes you in football. Mm. And um, with, with Forte, another university that has really got support, um, financial backing, um, also for them, a big shock, you know, I, I think they got promotion in their first year of, of the, the league, the mm -hmm. provincial league. And for them to be in this league is also quite a big shock for them. But they are slowly getting into the momentum, seeing how this every week football is, is supposed to be played. And they've also beefed up their squad quite a bit. So it's going to be an interesting second round into the league. Certainly will be. Now, we've uh, always spoken of Hollywood Bits and um, how much they've contributed to the uh, beautifully South African game. I believe there's more they're doing in contributing to the game. Yes, um, I think Hollywood has also stepped up. Um, last year, we launched the Hollywood Bits regional league, mm -hmm. which is them now not only focusing on women's football, but also giving back into provincial development men's football. Ah. So which is great. Uh, we have our provincial playoffs starting this weekend, um, this Saturday uh, in the Free State. And every every week, uh, depending on schedules, there will be provincial finals happening. Uh, so Hollywood Bets has really contributed a lot into South African football over the past four years. And there's a busy schedule coming up over the next few months. No, definitely. Um, they're busy, obviously, not just their football. They, well, they have Kosafa, they have Super League, which will continue into June mm -hmm. uh, after Banyana, unfortunately, not going to the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. um, they also have a whole lot of horse race challenges that are happening. You know, they dominate KZN mm -hmm. uh, between June and July, which is great for them as a sponsor. And we are honored as the South African Football Association to have them on board. Well, we certainly are honored to uh, have them on board. And I can tell you that uh, Hollywood Bets has gone one step further. Uh, they are now, um, well, sponsoring an academy uh, led by the uh, legendary Mungusi Professor Ngubani. So let's find out what Hollywood Bets and Professor Ngubani are up to in trying to show they are doing their bit to improve South African football. <laughs> Mlungisi Professor Ngubane is a South African footballing great, both as a player and a coach. Professor Ngubane established his soccer academy in Montclair, Durban in 2019. Hollywood Foundation recently lent support to the academy through a sponsorship of much needed kits and training equipment. 
I'm looking to see Professor Ngubane is an icon in South African football. Uh, he's regarded as one of uh, the best footballers uh, to have ever come out of uh, South African football. So when we receive his sponsorship request, uh, we thought we'll not be doing justice uh, if we are not partnering with him. Uh, so that's why we decided to sponsor him. Montclair, like many other suburbs across the country, is plagued with social ills that threaten the well-being of youngsters. Through his academy, Professor Ngubane has helped hundreds of youngsters in the area to develop their skills and stay away from these social ills by keeping them active and engaged in sports. We started this uh, in 2019 trying to help underprivileged kids. As you can see, kids are all over here. And we really appreciate what uh, Hollywood Foundation are doing for us by assisting us, uh, helping these kids to look nice, to motivate them, for them to stay away from the streets. The efforts that has gone into training these youngsters has borne fruit, as some players have moved on to the early stages of professional football. We have few guys now who are playing in the professional uh, level, uh, Royal AM, we have two there. So we still have few, few guys who are going to join uh, Amazulu Under-19 and MTC in the new season. For Hollywood Foundation, getting involved with sports development at the grassroots level is critical for the greater good of our society. Uh, the motivation uh, behind partnering with uh, Mlungisi Professor Ngubane Soccer Academy, it was uh, mainly to contribute to grassroots football uh, in South Africa because Hollywood Foundation is uh, unapologetic when it comes to uh, grassroots football and uh, the contribution of, uh, uh, of sport uh, in South Africa. We are happy for sponsored by Hollywood Foundation because some, some in the team, they don't have they don't have uh, uh, kids that help us a lot. It's all with squads, we would say, see, Chablis and Sikuzele, we would say, see, was Kubela Pambi, as Sebana and Nazi, we wish to play um, PSL, Jobanas Nas Cinema, Idol, Spoiler Gona, and that's one day, it's a phone by Idol, Lavana Manuan. Well, time flies when you are having fun and we hope you at home have uh, enjoyed uh, this show. Thank you so much to Nam Tlampel, of course, from uh, Safa. Not forgetting Jerry Skosana, as well as Shade McGregor. And we'd like to thank you at home for taking the time to join us here on Game On. So, from me, Sizu Mapena, and the rest of the team that is behind the scenes, is click, click, bang, 